Kane is in the building. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Draft Junkies. It's Cohesive Mock Day 3.0. 3.0 finally releasing that. So we got a new guy with us, of course, Dakota Richardson. He's going to be our new co-host. But uh, he's going to enter the pack, so that means one, two, three this week. Um, things have changed. They've been shaking up a lot, guys. So Free agency. Free agency. I mean, this is our post-free agency. I, I'd say it's post-free agency just because we know what a lot's going to happen. Yeah. So The main moves have happened, yeah. I think. So number one pick, we're giving it to you. I mean, I'm believing the hype, and I'm going to go Kyler Murray, quarterback. Number one, Kyler Murray. You got two. Man. San Francisco 49ers. They can go one or two ways here. And both ways seem legit to me. You know, they met with both, I heard, you know, and all that stuff. But the pick right here is Quentin Williams. He's the most surefire thing you're going to get. And I think that they have a lot of things where they can just scoot over. And Buckner's going to be there. Armstead on this side. Solomon Thomas on this side. You build a great young D line, and it's going to be good for them. And I, I seen a thing when they were interviewing Quinn Williams at his pro day. He put on forty pounds just to play D tackle. He was a defensive end yeah. earlier, but the defensive end stayed in school, so he wanted to play. Yeah. So he gained forty pounds and was the most dominant interior rusher in the whole draft. Who's so to say he can't shed it and play? Shed it and play on the edge. He, he's a baller. All right, number three for the New York Jets. This always seems to happen for them, but Nick Bosa. They need edge help. They're going to get it. He's the best. Finally going to get one that's yeah, he's, legit. Yeah, he's the uh, best edge rusher in, in this class. And Jets get lucky. As they always do. Yep. Uh, pick four. It's the first of three picks for the Oakland Raiders. I think they get that Khalil Mack replacement. Or can you replace a Khalil Mack? Josh Allen, outside linebacker from University of Kentucky. I think that's everything they've been, you know, talking about. He keeps saying it's hard to find edge rushers. Look no further than Josh Allen. He's a hungry kid. Yeah. I mean, good for him. It's going to be good. Um, number five, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh-uh. I feel like they know where this is going. <sighs> You've been screaming it. I have, but, man, so much has just changed and, it's a rocky road. I really see this. We've talked about it before. It's a, it's a good trade back. Mm-hmm. Wait, well, it is a good one. But for me, it's Devin White. You know, Alexander left you. You lost a lot of D-line help. I mean, you need a guy to fill gaps. He's the guy that's going to do it. He's been a top five pick in my book since the beginning of all this, and I think he's going to get picked. Good pick. Yeah. All right, I'm taking the other New York team, New York football giants. And I'm not believing the hype that they don't want a quarterback. I'm taking Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins. I'm taking him. The guy that believes they're not going to be in the top ten. You cannot rely on either one. I think Dwayne Haskins probably ends up starting the last four games of the year. So they're going to give Eli his farewell tour. But Dwayne Haskins is going to be the future. (laughs) At pick seven, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to give Nick Foles that freakish athlete on the outside that he really needs and DK Metcalf, receiver from Ole Miss. Not my number one guy, but I think he's going to go a lot higher than I would have taken. It really is the perfect situation for DK, though, because Foles is a guy that he'll lob it up to you. (laughs) I mean, he'll throw it. So, I mean, it's a good situation for DK. I like that pick. Um, Number eight, the Detroit Lions. I have mocked corner, 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 corners of them, I feel like. But I just I think that they're staying in state. I think it's Rashawn Gary. I really do. They need the help now. But I really think that Gary's going to go to Detroit, and fans are going to be happy about that. So, And that's what they really need. So. Yeah, that's fair. All right, number nine, the Buffalo Bills. My number one offensive lineman, Juwan Taylor. Yeah. I think he's a stud. I think they got to protect. They got a few low level receivers with Cole Beasley and John Brown. Yeah. Have Zay Jones there. I think they need to protect Josh Allen. And I think Juwan Taylor is an absolute stud. 
He's good. He's played right tackle, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if you put him on the left side. I, I, was, saying, I, I was watching his tape actually yesterday, and I, I was like, why is this guy not playing left tackle? Yeah, I, ben. I, I think he can play. He's you he protect your franchise. Yeah. So, Juan Taylor. Me uh, with the Denver Broncos, and I'm gonna believe a little bit of hype here myself, and I don't think Joe Flacco is the guy. I'm gonna take Drew Locke, quarterback out of Missouri. Easy pick. Seems like, I, I, seems like I mean, he's been mocked there. It's almost too easy. So that's he had dinner with Elway tonight, so mm-hmm. we know how that's gonna go. Mm-hmm. Um, the Cincinnati Bengals at eleven. It's just like we just talked about in another segment. I mean. They have a lot of needs, and they need the guys there. I think that this is the Devin Bush spot for me. I think that he's going early, and I think it's right here is where he's going to go, and he's going to be up there for years to come. Okay. Number 12, <laughs> Green Bay Junior. Packers. I think with making the moves in free agency, it really opened it up yeah. to uh, do something different. I uh, would love – Devin White, I love Devin Bush here. I want the I, I love the idea of a tight end. TJ Hawkinson's been my guy, but I'm going Ed Oliver. I'm taking Ed, Ed Oliver, and I think he's as great as he was. I think he can be even better in the yeah. NFL. He's not going to be facing constant double teams. I think you're going to move him all around that line in Mike Pettit's defense, and he's going to get the quarterback. We got our edge rushers. He's Mike Daniels is thirty plus. Last year was contract. I think they're kind of a Ed Oliver is like a super Mike Daniels, and what, what better way to replace him? And bring him in. Yeah, bring him bring him around, in. But. All right, pick thirteen, the Miami Dolphins. They gotta get some help on that defensive line. The guy I thought you were gonna take for the Packers here. I'm gonna take Montez Sweat, defensive end from Mississippi State. And. Uh, all that stuff the other day, the whole free existing heart condition, that's not going to affect this dude's draft yeah. stock. Yeah. Like yeah. He's a top 15 pick, flat. I don't care what he I think the real, the real guy could end up being a top 10. He could be. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Sure. Um, Hot race speed. Number 14, the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Can you hard to lose a draft pick? Yes and no. Because they do have needs, but but they're one of those. They don't always draft for their needs. Like they're a team that like they like a guy, they just go get a guy. So yeah. for me, I know that you want Greedy Williams to be the first corner off the board, but I don't think Atlanta fans are going to like them picking Greedy over DeAndre Baker. Give me DeAndre Baker. I think the Falcons pick DeAndre really? Baker, and I think that if DeAndre Baker didn't have this teenager attitude, he would be the number one corner. He just, he has a little Deshaun Jackson in him from back in the day and he just, he cares more about, you know, showboating than he does playing, so but give me DeAndre Baker for the Falcons. Number 15, the Washington Redskins. They need a quarterback, but I just don't like Daniel Jones all that much. And I think they lost Preston Smith to the good guys. And Ryan Kerrigan, he's good, but aging. aging. Yeah. A guy who I love, who I almost took at twelve, even though we just got edge rushers, is Brian Burns. I love Brian Burns. He's a he's a top he's top ten guy for me all day. Speed, 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 and you spent all especially if he gets to a team who has some interior rushers, which they do. Yeah. With Ron Payne and uh, Jonathan Allen. Yeah. You get that guy on the other side, and you harass Prescott and Carson Wentz all day long with Brian Burns. You try to. <laughs> <laughs> you give it your best. <laughs> Old college try. Yeah. All right, number 16, the Carolina Panthers. I think you got to protect Cam Newton if he's the guy this year. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go John Williams, the tackle Alabama. guard from yeah. Alabama. Just too much versatility. That's I, th- I think that's his sweet spot. Right. So eleven to probably eighteen is John Williams. Sweet and he spot. fits right in there because like he can play tackle, of course, but they do need that guard that can swing around and stuff, and like, he can do that stuff. Yeah. So lost yeah. Andrew Norwell last year to the Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. he's got some holes on the line. He's a technician. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, number 17, the New York Giants. You know, they traded the other day with Cleveland. Crazy good for Cleveland. But the New York Giants, like, they're going to have to come here now, and they're going to have to get either a wide receiver playmaker or they're going to have to get some defense going. And you're not going to – for me, you're not going to get a playmaker wide receiver right here at 17. You're going to get guys that you're going to have to bring along. So, for me, I think this is a really good spot to save Grady Williams. Give me another corner. I think they need that type of player. They need to they need to fill that corner spot. They've been needing to fill that secondary for a long time. Lost Landon Collins. I mean, I think that Grady Williams fits good with the Giants. Yeah. Yes. All right. Number 18 to the number 15. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings. Um, they need offensive line help. And I know – they have Riley Reef as a left tackle, yeah. but I think Kirk Cousins has kind of put him in a little bit of a cat hell. And if they could move on from a guy like that, if need be, they would like it. And I like Andre Dillard here, left yeah. tackle. I think you, he's athletic. You can play him on the right side. You know, you can move some different guys around, you get your best five on the field, but I think you can play right tackle, and if you need to move on and let him play left tackle. He's the best pure left tackle yeah. in the draft. Well, I like him a lot. I really do. Yeah. Number 19, the Tennessee Titans. Am I beside myself for at least the place for tight ends on the board? Mm-hmm. And I, we know who you... I was trying to make him fall. Don't mess <laughs> it up. <laughs> I, I think you got to get that... Uh, give Mario the weapon, and T.J. Hawkinson's game is a lot like Delaney Walker. So com- combine them, you get to learn from Delaney, and be good for years and years. It would be. I, I think that the T.J. Hawkinson thing, that's just too ideal for Tennessee. Oh, no, they would never uh, pass that up. Not no. a million years. Might be a guy next to try to move up a couple of yeah. spots if they need to. Just No doubt. It's so much like Delaney. Um, number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers, in need of a few things here, and their biggest need is probably the Ryan Chazier replacement, but it's not on the board for them here. So you're either getting back or you're picking, and I think they're picking, and I think they're picking A.J. Brown, wide receiver out of the old Miss. <laughs> yeah. A.B. 2.0. Nice. All right, number 21. Hang on. Catch my breath here. All right. Uh, <laughs> He's a big fan of A.J. Brown. Uh, God, I heard him. 21, the Seattle Seahawks. Um. You know, they obviously they need to protect Russell Wilson. They do. But a lot of their game is getting after quarterbacks. And I think you got Ryan you got Frank Clark on one end and you're gonna put Cleveland Farrell on the other end. I like that pick. He's gonna he's a try hard guy, he's gonna play the run, he can get after quarterback. And you never know with Frank Clark, you know, he ain't he said he ain't coming to camp without no deal. Yeah. So who knows? This, he may take the Le'Veon Bell play and not play at all. Hold out, and that's that's the part of their game. They need yeah. pass rush in Seattle. And Clint Farrell, he's he, it may be a little be too far. He may go yeah. a lot earlier. So he's good. He'd be really good for a locker room. Yeah, yeah. so that's I like him there. All right, the twenty-two, the Baltimore Ravens. Gotta get Lamar some help, and I'm gonna take my number one receiver in this year's class, and I kill Harry. Arizona State. And Lamar needs a big body guy. And he, his best years at Louisville was when he had Jalen Smith at playing at a high level. He needs that big body guy. I think Nikhil Harry is that guy. You need guys that you can chance it to. Nikhil Harry is probably the best chance guy in the draft. Like 50-50, this guy's going to win some way. I think he has the best route tree he, he coming from Arizona State of any of the receivers in this year's class. Yeah. More diversity. Yeah. Um, the Houston Texans. Um, here's another team that I see that they need to protect the quarterback, yep. but your options kind of limited now. Like you got to think about other positions, what you need. Um, they did really good on the defensive end, I thought, but um, I don't want I don't want to take your boy from you. But and I don't know if they'll trade back or whatever. But I like Marquise Brown here. Maybe it's we'll a little wild. Down down too. Maybe it's a little wild, but yeah. They need somebody that can play that slippery game, and I think that Marquise Brown fits good here. Yeah. I don't like him necessarily in the first round, but if it fits, it fits. Yeah, I'm with you. 
Uh, okay, the Oakland Raiders at 24. Got a lot of needs. And you've got Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. So you got that edge rusher. Honestly, I want this guy to fall so far, but I just I can't make him go that easy. you got to give him another one. They're losing Jared Cook. They need that big guy. I mean, it, it's just tight ends are basically big receivers. And yeah. You want to have Antonio Brown and Tyrell Williams going down the sidelines. You need that guy that can work the middle of the field, run away from guys. I want no offense to fall, but I can't. I can't make him do it. He's he's out. Yeah, he's top fifteen player on my yeah. board, so I, I just can't let him fall there for I got you. All right, let me get the Eagles. Oh, huh? twenty five, the Philadelphia Eagles. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Oh, I'm about to hurt him. <laughs> um, I was talking about him to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go Josh Jacobs, running back out of Alabama. They gotta get another guy in there. They do. Yeah. I think that we're all. Yeah. I think that we just talked about it, and it's just it's played out so long. We all see it coming, and it's not a bad pick. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if Jacobs doesn't go to the Eagles or one of these two Raider picks here at the end, I think he falls out round one. That's a sweet spot to me. Yep. I think another conversation, but I think he could be a Raider pick if he falls. Me too. Anyway, so 26 here. I'm lost. Sorry, guys. The Colts. <sighs> I mean, one thing to take a wide receiver right here, but who are they going to take? Yeah. Um, man, they got some needs, too. Um, I really I think I want to swing for the fence. I think that Frank Wright knows what he's doing. Let's, let's do a little Jeffrey Simmons. Let's get him off the board. You he know, wasn't going to make it out of the first round. Yeah, he wasn't going to make it out of the first gonna, round. He's a top 10 talent easily. And if he was going to sit behind, I, I just like Frank Wright as a coach. I really do. And I think that that's a guy that he would just come in next year and ball out for them. If not, if they get in the playoffs again, he might ball out then. This guy could be ready. Yeah. Me? Yep. Raiders again? Yeah, both of them? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, no fan, Josh Allen so far. I'm going to give them. Let's see. I don't know who I have up there. They got one rusher. Uh, they signed the safety before. That's a tough spot. Um, they need linebacker help. Not a linebacker there. Did they get another. Corner. Let's give him another corner. Let's go with uh, DeAndre Baker from Georgia. He's already he's gone. DeAndre Baker is already gone. Byron Murphy is the corner dog. Oh, I thought you said Byron Murphy. I want Byron Murphy. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said Byron Murphy. Yeah, Byron Murphy, the, the Raiders. Get somebody on the other side of Conley. I don't think yeah. he'll probably won't reside Melvin. I think he'll be a good spot. He gets to stay over on the West Coast. He's a good player, too. He is. He is. 28, the Los Angeles. Chargers. How many needs on this team? Say they give you a D tackle, maybe another safety, some linebacker help. Probably gonna be too high, but I think based on talent, it's, he's worth it. I'm gonna go Dexter Lawrence, defense tackle out of Kansas City. There's some red tape on the guy, but he's talent. I think that you know, there's four or five tons of players you pick in this like draft. They're gonna pan out. We still haven't picked Christian Lawrence. Yeah, so it's, been so it's been. I think Lawrence. I got Lawrence a spot or two ahead of him. Yeah, that's what they need to. They need that gigantic guy that's going to plug up the and play fullback. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going wild here with the Chiefs. All the corners that I think they'd pick are off the board. Okay, lost Justin Houston. Run game looks kind of iffy. You know, you want somebody who's going to fall to you. You want somebody who. Nobody thinks will make it in the first round, but they're going to. Ja'Kai Polite, I think that his film speaks for itself. I, I do think that there are question marks. I do think that, you know, some stuff probably happened the wrong way. And I was reading the other day, and you never know how these guys are interviewed, like is, what the questions they're asking, and how they respond. Like, if someone asked me a random stupid question, like, I'm going to say some dumb stuff <laughs> to you. So, Ja'Kai Polite, I think you make it to the
Well, I get them again. <laughs> All right, we're bad next, at math. Say yeah. Next time we're doing this, I'm getting them. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Green Bay Packers pick thirty. There's two guys I really like here. I'm having a tough. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Irv Smith Jr. Tight end. Okay. I wanted Noah Fant. I wanted Hawkinson. We got defensive stud at twelve with Ed Oliver. We need a tight end. We need someone we can groove, groom, and Irv Smith. You can move him all around. You can move him. He's gonna be special. Yeah, you can line him up at H back. You can line him up wide. You can line him up in line, and he blocks. You know, he wasn't getting on the field at Alabama if he couldn't block. So we to the right school to be talking about blocking. Yeah, we uh, we could use him. I want a safety here. I really almost took uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson or Adderley. But safety's deep. Yeah, you can get a safety at forty four. I think I think Irv Smith's kind of the the last of the he's not as polished probably as Hawkinson yeah. and Fant, but he's he's in the big three level. So I'll uh, happily take him. All right, pick thirty one, the Los Angeles Rams. I think their biggest hole is replacing Roger Saffold. I'm gonna do it with this pick. I'm gonna take Garrett Bradbury, center guard for NC State. That guy's gonna make it in the first round. Mm-hmm. He's got to. He's so I don't. Talented. In between 25, starting with the Eagles at 25 down to 32, he'd go in any one of those slots. It makes sense. So I really, I think Bradbury's but, gonna do it. But the Saints wish they still had their first round pick with Max Unger yeah. retiring. Watch out for the Saints getting back up in there too. Yeah. Like they're gonna try and pull they a rabbit out of that. Yeah, I just, they don't have any am- ammunition, do they? Unless they're trading next year's first again. But I know he wouldn't sign with you, but hey, Miami. <laughs> you want Teddy? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, so to end this all, the New England Patriots, of course, I think that they're in a situation where they want Jeffrey Simmons, they want Ja'Kai Paul, they want all those guys to trickle down, trickle down, trickle down. I don't think it's going to happen. So... For the Patriots here, I feel like that they're gonna go. Get, they're gonna get a safety, and I think that you know they like the ball hawk type guys. I'm gonna put Adderley in here. I just think that you know it's it's not a normal pick for the Patriots, and no pick is for no. those guys. It seems like they just shoot for the fence sometimes. So for me, I think that Nazar Adderley is gonna go be a New England Patriot, which could be a you know better spot for him, obviously. Yep. Couple so, guys. I guess we kind of overlooked a little bit. Yeah. Christian sure. Wilkins probably not going to slip out first, but he can go to the a, right here too. It's a deep draft, you know. We're, yeah. It's there's going to be somebody that falls. I'm telling um, you, there are going to be so many fans, including us three. Like we're going to be super upset when the first round ends. Yeah. Because there's so many good yeah. players still on the board. It's like, listen, we got to wait till tomorrow night to go through this again. <laughs> Cody like, Ford. Cody's he's Ford. Guy. He's, he could very well go early. I almost picked him. For the Vikings. At 18. He's probably been better pick than Dillard, <laughs> but he can. Reisner still yeah, there? I mean, yeah, Mike Reisner. It's a deep draft. It's such a deep draft. There's some weak positions. Yeah. But. So who are the quarterbacks off the board? Haskins, Locke, Murray. Well, that's all it made it? Yeah. That's all it should be. Yeah. That's all it made it. That'd be interesting, too. New England Patriots, Daniel Joe Barry. If I didn't pick. Haskins at six, you ought to probably pick Daniel Jones. 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 17. 17 yeah. Most likely. I mean, I don't believe in it all, so. Yeah. I'm really just off that wagon, but hey, you never know. Yeah. So, feel comfortable though? I mean, yeah. talent's going to trickle down either way. Yeah. You got to feel good about it. I just don't think Cody Ford's going to be that guy. With this, with this class that. Offensive lineman, if he can play tackle, I don't think he's going to be one of those guys that falls out of first round. I don't think so either. No. I, can't see Chris, Chris, I can't see Christian Chris 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 There's so many guys, so many. Yeah. And, like, honestly, you could say that you got a plot, Nazar, Adderley. Like, I mean, was, like, there's five guys that we named that you can say they're going to fall out. And then those the, other five guys are going to surprised at all. But, yeah, you if you watch Polite's tape, I mean, if you didn't have the combine questions and a Slower 40. I mean, that guy's a top 15 pick. He gets after the quarterback. Easy. So, 
All right, y'all. So that is it for our cohesive mock 3.0 post free agency. So all the trades and rumors going around, all that just kind of pushed into this 3.0. It's March 20th now. So not much time left here. 36 days, 37 days. Pretty exciting time for us. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Tell them about the keep it up. mock challenge. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, to all of our social media accounts, first and foremost, um, all of our social media brothers and stuff out there doing the same thing we are, we are having a mock-off, as we're calling it. You know, we're going to use the mock-out app. Shout out to mock-out. Um, we're going to do a little challenge for bragging rights to see who's running the show kind of thing. You know, best opinions out there. Um, cohesive mocks coming to a group challenge. Whoever gets the most picks right, accuracy, gets the most points. We're doing it for bragging rights, so, you know. And to the fans out there, we're going to have an open group for y'all as well that y'all can jump in. So it's going to be good for everybody. Um, continue to follow and support us on Twitter and Instagram and all of our personal Twitter and Instagrams will be at the end of this. So, um, deuces. It's 26 minutes. I really thought you were about to hit him with the freaking uh, Duke Perfect.